Soft tackle this week is called the Woodcock Quill. This also is from Sylvester Neem's book, Two Centuries of Soft Hackles. It's a rather interesting fly that was first mentioned in a book by Roger Woolley in 1932 on modern soft tackles, which I find kind of interesting that you would have like, I guess, traditional soft tackles and then modern soft tackles. I just found it really interesting. It's a simple pattern. I've seen another one similar to this, the peacock and partridge, which is generally just a peacock body and a Hungarian partridge hackle. But I have seen some people tie that pattern with the gold tag on the back as well. This one I chose because it uses woodcock for the hackle. Not a lot of calls in a lot of flies these days for woodcock feathers. These are happen to be a wing feather. So I thought it would be fun to tie. So that is the woodcock quill. And we'll go ahead and get started. start our woodcock quill placing our hook on the vise. This is a Mustad 3906B in a size 14. Debar the hook and I'll attach my thread. For thread I'm just using a UTC 70 denier in a burnt orange. I think the original recipe used an orange or kind of a golden orange, maybe a ginger color uh, silk. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this burnt orange, attaching my thread right behind the eye of the hook, getting it about a quarter of the way down the hook shank. There is a tag on this of gold tinsel. So I'm going to use some Danville size 14 silver and gold tinsel. I'm going to attach that to the hook with the silver side up. And that will fold over to the gold side when I start to wrap that in. I'm going to wrap my thread in touching turns down the hook shank to secure the tag in. I'll wrap till my thread is just a little bit past the point of the hook. This is where my tag is going to start. I'm going to turn the hook over. You'll notice that my tinsel has flipped over to the gold side. I'm going to get three wraps kind of overlapping down the hook, bend just a little bit, and then three wraps back up to form the tag. When you're wrapping this tinsel in, you do want to keep it under fair tension. And the reason is, is sometimes if you're too loose with it, you can end up with a bump where the tinsel doesn't lay nice and flat. If you pull on it a little bit harder, you don't necessarily stretch it, but you do get it to flatten out so that your tag doesn't have any little seams or creases sticking up. Binding that in, I'm going to bring my thread back to the end of the shank. Notice I'm just past the point a little bit. This is where I'm going to tie the body in. The body of the woodcock quill is made out of peacock hurl. I'm just going to select a couple of strands of peacock hurl. I want to even up the butt ends here, and then I'm going to trim away the butt ends down here. This is a strong batch of hurl, and a lot of times when those are all sewn together, they get mashed and, and messed up. So I'm just going to trim those off. I'm going to tie these in so that the hurl extends the length of the body. That will give me a nice smooth underbody. And then I'm going to wrap forward in touching turns to bind all that in. I'm 
I'm going to use the rotary feature of my vise for this. So I'm going to bring my thread up behind the eye of the hook, swing my bobbin cradle in, and then droop the thread and the bobbin over the bobbin cradle. This just is a little bit easier if you have this opportunity. If not, you can certainly polymer this hand over hand. Start wrapping that in to cover up the thread in the back. If your two hurls tend to split a little bit as you're going around the point of the hook, that's fine. You'll notice they come back together. I'm going to wrap those up to about a half an eye length behind the eye of the hook. And yeah, we'll get one more wrap in there. This fly does not have to have a pronounced head on it like the Bradshaw's Fancy did, so I want to get that about an eye length from the eye of the hook. I'll get three wraps to bind that hurl in, keeping my thread under tension. I can then break those hurls off. Wrapping towards the eye of the hook, I'm going to wrap back just to tidy that up and give myself a nice smooth area for my hackle. Now the woodcock quill uses woodcock feathers, wing feathers to be exact, for the hackle around the collar here. There's a lot of different feathers you can choose on this. It's up to you in terms of the size. I think the original recipe wanted a feather that was closer to the outside of the wing but there's not a whole lot of different feather sizes on here. I mean, there's, I should say there's a lot of different sizes. There's not a whole lot in terms of quantity of each size. So choose a feather. And then like most of these soft hackles, you will stroke those fibers down, try and get those about 90 degrees, and then you can measure them. Depends on you, but I like my hackles a little bit long. So if they go from about the tie-in point to past the bend, I'm comfortable with that. Peel away the excess. Take my small hackle pliers. Grab the tip. And then I'll stroke these fibers back. One thing you'll notice about the woodcock is the barbs on these have a whole lot of barbules. That's the little hooks that hold each of the barbs together. So unlike your standard hen, which would tend to break up pretty easy, um, this, they tend to stay together. I'm going to trim away the tip, give myself a nice little triangle to tie in, set that right up front of the body, and wrap those in real well, get my thread down to just behind the eye of the hook. Take my hackle pliers, stroking the fiber rearward, rearward. I'll then polymer that in. Like I said, you'll see that these barbs, they don't all separate real nice and easy because of all the barbules on them. Just keep working it a little bit Understand that when this is in the water, all of those will separate very easily. You get about two, maybe two and a half wraps around. Bring your thread over. Fold back the rest of the rachis, starting at you know, behind the eye of the hook, back a little bit to form the head. Again, it doesn't have to be pronounced. If you want to, you can certainly make it a little bit more pronounced. Now my thread's splitting up a little bit, so I'm going to unwrap a wrap or two. Get in a five or six turn whip finish. Trim away your thread. You can pop the rest of that stem or rachis off. And then just try and fluff these out a little bit. 
you'll see a lot of them will kind of stick together. But like I said, once that gets in the water, they tend to separate and they tend to move around a lot. And this, this fly tends to have a lot of action. If you don't have woodcock, I, you know, I think you could use some of the browner feathers on a Hungarian partridge, possibly even some grouse. You know, don't feel you can't tie this fly if you don't have the woodcock. A little bit of head cement on both sides of the head of that, just a half a drop. Soak down in those threads, those hackle fibers to protect them. And that is your woodcock quill. As I mentioned before, I haven't fished this fly. I don't live in real trouty waters. So there's a lot of the older soft tackle patterns. I just haven't had the opportunity to fish. However, um, I'm planning on this year getting out and doing a little bit more fishing with soft tackles as well as this would be, I think, a good panfish fly. It has lots of action to it. It's got some color and shine. Peacock curl is always good for almost any small fly for trout and or panfish. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's the woodcock quill. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.